Shovel Knight Plague of Shadows is the second campaign in the Shovel Knight series that takes place alongside the original game, Shovel of Hope, seemingly contradicting the events and story of the first game. This has led many people to assume that the game takes place in an alternate universe, or, at the very least, is not canon to the Shovel Knight timeline. Is the game really canon? Short answer is, yes, it is. The long answer is a bit more complicated, but yes, a majority of Plague of Shadows' story is canon to the overall Shovel Knight timeline. You may ask how this is possible, considering Shovel Knight's seemingly different behavior, impossible weapons, and considering how Plague Knight fights every night of the Order of No Quarter in the boss rush instead of Shovel Knight. Plague Knight actually travels through every level of the game before Shovel Knight does. Canonically, Plague Knight finds a worthless relic in hidden areas, and then finds Chester in the same location that Shovel Knight would, and he trades Chester the worthless relic for a special item that only Plague Knight can use. The only way Shovel Knight can acquire these items is from Chester, so this means that, canonically, Plague Knight will have to find these weapons to trade to Chester. In the Tower Ascent level, the level with the boss rush, Shovel Knight clearly also falls into the fight after Plague Knight, meaning that Plague Knight went through the level first. The Enchantress's dialogue before you fight her implies that Plague Knight did not actually defeat her and that she is just tired of fighting him and would prefer not to kill him, so she gives up her essence willingly. While Plague Knight fights his final bosses, Shuffle Knight deals with the Enchantress and legitimately defeats her. The Enchantress's final form is then revealed to not actually be the reason the tower fell, but instead, Plague Knight making the decision to use the ultimate potion to destroy the tower, which is the reason why it crumbled. Naturally, this means that the defeat of the Remnant of Fate and the defeat of the Corrupted Essence happened at about the exact same time in different locations in the tower. Now you may be wondering about how Mona, Baz, and the Armor Outpost play into all of this. How can Mona be in two places at once? It's likely that she's only ever in the Potionarium when Plague Knight is since both of them enter the Potionarium on the Torque Lifts whenever the player enters the Potionarium. This would mean her default location would be under the village, waiting for Shovel Knight so that she can run her minigame. How can Baz be one of Plague Knight's minions and still fight Shovel Knight? This is simple. Shovel Knight fights Baz before Plague Knight fights him, and then Plague Knight recruits him. This makes even more sense when considering his dialogue in Plague of Shadows which implies that he's been defeated and rejected by the Knights of the Order before, since he possibly thought that Shovel Knight was a part of the Order, since he has Knight in his name. Now how can Plague Knight take over the Armor Outpost if Shovel Knight can go to the Outpost at any time and there's no Plague Minions to be found? Simple. Just like with Baz, canonically, Shovel Knight must have finished all his business at the Armor Outpost before Plague Knight ever arrived to take it over. Now, the only inconsistencies left lie in the fight between Plague Knight and Shovel Knight in the Explodatorium, and the fight between the two in the Boss Rush. Here's where things get a bit more interpretive. The explanation for these inconsistencies from Yacht Club games themselves is simple. It's a difference in storytelling perspective, each of the characters that star in each story. So, Shovel of Hope is actually a recounting of events by Shovel Knight himself while Plague of Shadows is a recounting of events from Plague Knight's point of view. This also applies to Spectre of Torment, and to the future game King of Cards, so keep that in mind when playing them. Maybe not everyone loves King Knight as much as he really implies in his story. Anyways, it is accepted that Plague Knight is an, quote, unreliable narrator for the sections involving Shovel Knight, for story purposes at least. The current explanation from Yacht Club is that Shovel Knight was actually the one who won the fight between the two in the Explodatorium, and he was actually the one who won in the boss rush. Plague Knight is actually lying in his story to make himself seem more honorable, or cooler, or more powerful. No, no, no. You're getting it wrong. It was I who won the battle against Shovel Knight. He is just a cheater. He got back up and hit me while I was celebrating. The same kind of unreliable narration happens in the boss rush, where Plague Knight makes it sound like he was the one who did the fighting against the Knights of the Order, instead of Shovel Knight, for whatever reason. Storytelling-wise, this is all a bit abstract, and it's clear why the story has to be interpreted and explained in this way. If everything was taken literally, it wouldn't make any sense, because Yacht Club prioritized gameplay over storytelling in this game. 
but that is perfectly fine since both the gameplay and the storytelling are phenomenal. Then again, maybe the tiny details about the lore of a game about a knight who uses a shovel as a weapon isn't meant to be taken too seriously in the first place. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this one. I know my upload schedule is kind of inconsistent, but I do plan on making content and posting it on a semi-regular basis, so just bear with me.